Hi guys, Hengist here from House of Hengist Comics. A big welcome back to the channel and a big hello to our new subscribers. Today it's Blitzkrieg, episode 14, Charberez. And first, the news. And what we're going to look at today is the important role of the radio, first used as a mechanism of communication but subsequently used uh, for propaganda. Uh, and, and here we have the, the Minister of Public Enlightenment, Joseph Goebbels, the master, who states we have made the right by propaganda, and adds propaganda works best when those who are being manipulated are confident they are acting on their own free will, possibly relevant today. But on the home front, here we have the radio with uh, everyone listening, and the BBC was considered in its way impartial. But on the, uh, the service front, the radio is also used to broadcast uh, announcements and also to keep troops abreast of what's going on. And we have the radio being used by the military, and this is really important because it's the first time we see modern communications. Here's a uh, field telephone, and this map indicates the radio intelligence findings from the French campaign, how the Germans were operating using their radio transmissions. Well, Blitzkrieg in itself um, was coined by an American journalist during the Poland campaign, but in fact, it actually uh, was not used by the Germans themselves. In fact, the Germans refer to it as a Bewegungskrieg, or maneuver, uh, ultimately ending up in Keschelschlacht, which is a cauldron. So ultimately, Blitzkrieg is a series of uh, maneuvers which basically culminate in the enemy basically being penetrated, surrounded, and destroyed. But there are other tactical uh, methods of uh, defeating enemy, as these two slides show here. But the key point is communications, because without that, you can't keep that momentum going. So as the Panzers roll, it's all about staying in touch with higher command. And whilst everyone else on the front line is fighting, the party started in the occupied nations. And uh, we can see the Schuster line has been levelled. Uh, effectively uh, and a lot of the uh, occupied countries their soldiers are being returned home to their loved ones whilst above in the skies we have the Stukas dominating uh, and, and basically bringing havoc the German columns rolling in you know inexorably towards their targets um, and we've got basically all sorts of problems for the infantry trying to stay up deal with these pockets of resistance uh, many many are not mechanized but uh, Gerderin is basically driving this this is his baby the whole concept of uh, a lightning war so to speak and uh, Rommel who is one of his stars uh, one of the uh, the great commanders basically leads the ghost division as they uh, are penetrating uh, through Belgium Whilst Hitler appears outwardly confident, it's all about the timetable and he remains quite nervous. So now let's look at the forces today and let's look at the Belgians. And these are uh, again the uh, Chasseurs Ardennes, uh, that famous regiment uh, that basically trained uh, and has fought uh, within the Ardennes itself already in this campaign. Uh, they're going to be confident trained, have the advantage of local knowledge, which basically means they're gone to ground when concealed. And um, they're going to have three infantry platoons, machine guns, mortars and some scouts. So not a lot to take on the advance guard of uh, Panzer forces, but they're in a narrow, restrictive sector. The German forces today, well, that's the uh, elements of the Ghost Division, led by, him, by Rommel. Um, Rommel won't be present, but he's got uh, basically a light tank company, uh, an independent tank platoon, uh, and some infantry. All the tankers uh, and uh, the Kratschützen will basically be a uh, confident veteran, whilst uh, the infantry in trucks and, and all of that will basically be confident trained. Um, and they're going to be moving up with the view to stay on timetable and press through uh, Chabarets. But uh, we've also got Kurt von Kurland, uh, he's going to be there with his eight rads. And the radio and communications are key to this particular action. Okay, let's uh, now look at the research set and the mission for this particular action. Uh, we've already done Bodang uh, with the Chasseurs uh, Ardennes. And, and we've looked at the actions there and also of uh, Martilange. But uh, we came across this as well and it is, Chabrez is under some debate as to how big an action it actually was. It's located here uh, via, uh, on the north of the map there. Some of the images we've got are very poor quality and I apologise for that. 
but this one really helped to uh, focus us what it's all about and basically it's all concerning a roadblock uh, blocking that time and how Rommel responds and so um, he responds atypically you know and and you'll see that through the game it sort of went to history on that very quickly very decisively trying to to push forward but the Chasseurs Ardennes also fought very well in this action so um, it, it, it's it's a very balanced scenario where every turn they hold by the clock will be ticking and points are awarded for how long they can hold so it's a quite an interesting scenario and let's start looking at the set and the details we've built I don't think it's absolutely accurate but it's the best we could do within the time frame and I'm quite pleased it sort of simulates the conditions here's the road obstacle and there was the, uh, the tank ditch there as well because uh, there's a tank ditch we're also using Achtung Panzer and today we're going to show some of those deck cards as well uh, and just how they've been used. So without further ado, let's get into the battle. Well it's great weather but not Führer weather and basically any delay on these narrow roads will cause problems and the Germans are moving up. We've already got one broken down uh, Panzer III at the back there uh, that's just come off the road um, and basically as that moves forward they run into a collaborator who's trying to advise them but no one speaks any French uh, so they fail to pick that one up that there's enemy present here. You can't really see much. The Belgians have got most of their forces in ambush. They've only got one platoon on with the mortars and the scouts. So it doesn't look as though there's a lot there, but in fact, in the front uh, of these buildings, we, we have a lot of Belgian infantry with one anti-tank rifle. As the Panzers move forward, avoiding all the abandoned uh, baggage that's been left by fleeing civilians, you can see just here, there's a, it's, it's a difficult vantage. The Kratschutz and dismount move up to remove the metal obstacles. This presents a great target, basically, but the Belgians don't fire. They don't want to reveal their position. And more importantly, they want to wait. And wait they do for Overwatch and open fire as the Kratschutz and come across. They're forced to immediately disengage with four men dead. Um, Basically, the tanks now push their way through the, uh, the mangled carcass of one BMW and drive over it and move forward to get into a gunnery position. Um, and they push the other barricade away easily and start opening fire. Uh, and as you can see here, they've taken out one team, which happened to have been the uh, observer for the mortar. This was using a sharpshooter card and it wasn't joking, so it couldn't be prevented. And uh, the rolls went in and it was made. But they then ambush with another platoon here. This is the one with the anti-tank rifle. Just in turn four as we get the event car. And that's Rommel on the radio. What the hell is going on? What is causing my delay? Give me uh, solutions. And basically he decides to allocate his independent tanks basically around the flank as the infantry are waiting, wondering what to do next. And the tanks, the heavier tanks are waiting as well, further back in the column. And as we can see, the Panzer twos and ones lead out and basically push into the town edge. But they're blocked. They can't move much further forward because there's infantry. And the Belgians now open fire again on the Kratschilts and sending them scurrying away with another four men dead. But by God, 20 mil fire. It was devastating. It tore the plasterwork to pieces. The windows were blown out. Furniture destroyed. And unfortunately, about 25 Belgians just took that lead. And we they tried to fire some smoke, but it was ineffective. As we hear the grumbling and roaning of tanks as it rumbles in from the flank, led by um, Great Kirk Kurland, who's basically leading at the van as trucks start to arrive with at least two infantry platoons uh, to, to the bridge which is now under smoke to try and reduce the rate of fire. The Panzer III's moved up and joined the column and uh, basically Curland arrives and he's driving straight forward. Um, uh, he's got them in the flank basically, they failed reaction, they've got no reserves, it's a disaster for Belgium. But at the same point, the Kratschutzen start coming under withering fire. But that tank fire, the return fire, is systematic, building by building. It's just being levelled effectively. With this great view here of the town as the, as the infantry are moving up, Curland senses his moment. But as he does, mortar fire again comes down on the Kratschutzen, who have taken over 50% casualties now and uh, are looking rather weak as we get an ambush from a heavy machine gun platoon. But what on earth is that going to do? It's got a very limited amount of firepower into these sort of tin cans, so to speak. But that tin can armour is strong enough to stop some of these bullets. The German infantry discount, dismount and basically start moving forwards. But um, as they do, the mortars decide to redirect. Um, they try 
high concealed fire as well, but that's jokered by the Germans. Um, and so they lose their gun to ground if they fire, and they have to open fire. There's a third platoon here which is ambushed. The mortars are basically ranging in, and they've killed at least 20 Germans, basically, just from one salvo. It was a, a great round. But the German tanks are now really, really starting to to put so much pressure. They're effectively firing left, right and centre, even though Curlin's men have driven back um, with a failed save, uh, that they're, they're pushed back, but they, they continue. The sniper suddenly appears, open fire, tries to take out their mortar OP, but misses. But as you can see, the Germans are beginning to move up, but still being caught by mortar fire. But that's irrelevant, because the Panzers are unleashed in the flank, as the gun line basically levels the front of this town, um, the Belgians realise there's just no hope. They've got to start pulling out. They just haven't had their reserve card. It's been terrible. And uh, basically the mortars, if they don't run, are going to get overrun. The scout platoon is basically taken out and breaks. Only four men left in that. As the uh, Panzers, with uh, basically no regard, just drive over the heavy machine guns, crushing them under their tracks and basically continue down the road. It's over really. Um, the Belgians basically shake the uh, German commander's hands and it's a German victory. But 10 victory points. They had held for four hours uh, in history, it was six. So Rommel can be quite pleased with himself. Um, you know, whether this action was as bloody and traumatic as that, I don't know. The Chasseurs Ardennes certainly covered themselves in glory. Their anti-tank rifle did nothing. Um, Gerderin seems to be quite pleased. They haven't fallen too far behind on timetable. But had those reserves turned up, who knows? It could have been a different matter entirely. But as we return to, uh, to Belgium uh, next week, uh, I hope you'll stay with us. Kleist can be quite happy as his Panzergruppen move forward. But I'd just like to give another quick shout out to Drake's War Channel who does some brilliant narrative wargaming on Vietnam. And also to a Sergeant Historian, uh, a military guy who does wargaming and weapons. You know, check him out. And ultimately, let's always remember and honour the fallen. And uh, never forget, uh, whatever side they were on, uh, lives were lost. And uh, I hope you'll continue to stay with us with Blitzkrieg. Um, so it's over and out from me. And bye for now. Best wishes.